Good morning. Um, I want to tell you that I have this joy that I'm experiencing, and I want to share that with you because I want to thank God for breaks. Anybody want to? Yeah, jump in. Yes. Because I know many of us, we need this mid-semester break that we're having starting tomorrow, right? We need it, right? So I want to thank God for breaks. Jump, yeah. Praise the Lord. Thank you for this break. Thank you. <laughs> and here's the really cool thing about it is taking breaks, um, this is actually a part of God's character. On the seventh day, even if you're not sure if it's a literal seventh day, but on this seventh day, God rested. Jesus stepped away from the crowds and from ministry to rest. And so as we are image bearers who were created in the likeness of God, we need to learn how to rest. Because there's this belief that if we practice self-care and if we sleep eight hours a night, we will feel rested and refreshed. However, I woke up this morning feeling exhausted. And you know what I know about this even um, more well because I am a mom. <laughs> and there are studies that show that moms do not get enough sleep. There's actually this, uh, this statistic or the, sh the study that shows that each child increases a woman's risk of getting insufficient sleep by 46%. I remember there was a time when Eden was so young and she woke up every two hours. And there was a time where she slept more than two hours and I freaked out. I'm like, why aren't you waking up? I didn't even enjoy that she slept more than two hours. And the culprit is not just multitasking, but it's also worrying. Because many times I was sleeping or we are sleeping or sitting still physically, but we are running emotionally. And so Solomon, the wisest man who has walked the earth, he says this, unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the guards stand watch in vain. In vain you rise early and stay up late, toiling for food to eat, for he grants sleep to those he loves. And so in this, in this um, psalm, Solomon isn't saying that hard work is bad. But what he's saying is that there's a vanity in relying on our own strength. Solomon is saying that the trust we put into our hard work and the anxiety that it induces by relying on our own selves is vanity. Solomon is saying that if God isn't in it or if God isn't calling us to it, it is vanity. The good news is that God is wanting and desiring to grant us rest. God is inviting us into a true rest, a rest for our souls. And so in the, the book of Matthew, we see Jesus giving us this invitation. It says, come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And so oftentimes we misunderstand rest or even rest for our souls as inactivity. Even sometimes in this chapel space we think, okay, I'm really tired, so what I'm gonna do is be passive in this time. I'm really tired coming into this chapel space, so what I'm going to do is disengage and try to find some rest. But what this spiritual rest that Jesus is promising is through a communion with God. It's, with, it's through a life with God. God is inviting us into rest, and he's inviting us through this. He says, those who are exhausted— if you had a hard time getting out of the bed this morning, he's inviting you. He says, those who are exhausted and those who carry heavy loads, 
Jesus is asking you to step into God's presence, and he will give you all you, like, all you need. He says, look, step into my presence, not just step into chapel space, not just step into times of prayer, but to also give me your burdens while you're in that space with me. Jesus says, take my yoke upon you. And many of us know this yoke language or this Christianese term, but many times we don't know what it means. This yoke was a wooden harness that was placed on the shoulders of an animal. And this wooden harness was meant to direct an animal, but it was also meant to help balance and make a heavy load more manageable. So Jesus is saying, look, take my yoke upon you, this yoke that was meant to help carry a load, to make a heavy load more manageable, and to even give us ba balance and direction. Jesus is saying, look, take my yoke upon you. And I even think that there's this irony that even God gives us physical reminders that we need to replace our yokes that may be perfection, comparison, lack of self-control, or even boundaries. That he reminds us that we need to exchange these yokes through weariness. <laughs> and we're also reminded that I know oftentimes when I feel stress, I feel it in my shoulders. And I know that it's not ironic because God is saying, look, daughter, <laughs> take my yoke upon you. Because sometimes I'm like, okay, is it just because I'm hunched over? It's not good posture? No, I'm stressing. And my heavenly father is saying, take my yoke upon you. Exchange this yoke for mind. And so we will not experience true rest, true rest outside of the presence of God. And choosing to lay our burdens at the feet of Jesus is not an option, but it is the answer to spiritual rest. And so what this is asking is, is, is for us to reflect and to ask, what is God inviting us to lay down? What anxieties or burdens were we preparing to carry into our breaks? Yet God is waiting to help carry those burdens for you. And so it requires time of reflection and, and, and confession, but it also requires trust. That we trust the character of God. That we trust these promises that he will give us rest. That he will grant sleep to those whom he loves. And I, and I can tell you, when my mind is running, yet I am trying to sleep, I am waking up exhausted. And I don't want us to go into this gift of a break that we have next week and return back exhausted. And so I want to invite uh, my brother James back up. And um, I have some other student leaders who want to be a part of this time of reflection, of prayer, and in this time, I want to ask you to reflect on the areas that God is asking you to lay down. I want you to think and envision within your own minds what yoke are you carrying that the Lord is not requiring and has not asked you to carry. And for you to step into this response by saying, okay, I may need prayer to help me lay down these burdens before going into the break. I may need to reflect on the truth of these worship songs in order for me to be reminded of the yoke that I should be carrying. Whatever posture you want to enter into this space, I want to invite you to do so. And so at this time, I want to invite our student leaders up as well. And if we in any way can help carry your loads through prayer, we want to invite you to come and to allow us to pray for you. If you want to sit in this space and just allow the presence of the Lord to comfort you and refresh you, you can do so. And if you're someone like me that responds through music and you want to stand up and you want to sing along with James, we want to invite you into that space. And so let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that we can find rest in your presence. We thank you so much that rest and boundaries are a part of your character. And we pray that um, as we step into the gift of mid-semester break next week, Lord, I pray that we are able to moment by moment release burdens and yokes that you have not 
required us to carry. And I pray that we can experience true rest and refreshing, not only in your presence, but in the obedience of uh, trusting you to carry our burdens. Your scripture is so clear when it says that this yoke that you place upon us helps to carry the load. It helps to direct us. It doesn't weigh us down and it doesn't, um, it's not meant to frustrate us or it's not meant to punish us, Lord, but it is a yoke that directs and helps to carry the load. And so I pray in this time we feel a refreshing from you, Lord. In Jesus, in your mighty name we pray. Amen.